to interview Miss Indiana America. And um, I'm excited about it. It's kind of like, do you guys have things as couples or as friends that you do like you always do? Like this is like one of our things. And I was thinking about this today like as I was getting ready because I have been in such a hurry all day today, you guys. I had to meet with a friend of mine for coffee, but that is bad. I had to meet with a friend of mine for coffee. And so before I met with my friend, I went and I had, um, or I did my booktube video really quick. And then, um, okay. I did my booktube video really quick. And then after that, I like went and met with him for coffee. And then like, I came home really quick because I had my hair appointment at four. And um, God, I am like stuck in really bad traffic. And I'm supposed to be there right now. Um, I'm trying to think of which might be the faster way. I can't really, I'm trying to like what my gut is telling me. My gut is telling me just to be patient. But I'm not going to be. Um, so I came home and I filmed my Peterisms video and then I like went and got my hair cut and while I was getting my hair cut I was like watching the Shane Dawson Jeffree Star video so I could come home and film that. I was on my way home. I got stuck behind a driver's ed car. So it took me like twice as long to get home. I went and got coffee. I filmed the video. And then I changed really quick. But like, I look so sloppy to go to this thing. I have on like khaki shorts, like cut off khaki shorts, Birkenstock sandals, and like this black t-shirt. And I'm like, back in the day, like when we would do this, I always tried to look really, really nice. And I'm just like, I did not have the time today, but because it's something that Alex and I love to do together, I was like, I'm gonna go, you know? Because it's more about the experience than it is, you know, just looking fantastic for it. Who cares about that shit anyway, right? Nobody. So anyway, I think I just made my time going here even longer, <laughs> but I don't care. I have felt very productive today though. And I'm listening to Harry Potter on Audible. The first one I'm listening over again. I'm behind, I said I was gonna listen, I was gonna read it in July and then I was gonna read Chamber of Secrets in August, but I'm gonna, I'm rereading it. I'm listening to the audio version of it which is actually really adorable. Um, but you can't listen to it on two times speed. It's just like, it's too hard to understand what they're saying. Um, and so I'm listening to that on Audible and then I'm gonna read Chamber of Secrets when I get done with that. And uh, it's good though. Like, I mean, I've read it before and I've seen the movie, but it's the only one in the series. So I'm not really like a Potterhead. But I think I'm gonna do a video tomorrow for my booktube channel where I get resorted because I have never, um, I've gotten sorted from like two different things. I'm sorry for the lighting in here, you guys. It's really sunny out today. Um, but I haven't like, but both times I got sorted, it told me something different. Like the first time I was a Hufflepuff and the second time I was a Gryffindor. And of course I wanted to be a Gryffindor, although everybody tells me that I'm a Hufflepuff. So anyway. So I think I might do that video tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna listen to a little bit of my audiobook. I've got about 10 minutes left till I get there and I will see you guys later. Bye. Stop. There's my husband. Roll down your window. Roll down your window. Did you have fun interviewing Miss Indiana America? Yep. Do you think she's gonna win? I think, I think so. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> you think she's gonna win Miss Indiana America? Miss, well, she already won Miss Indiana America. Okay, I'll see you back at the house. <laughs> <laughs> Miss America, maybe. Bye. That's really pretty. Bye. 
Okay, so we are on our way home. We just got done. Interviewing Miss Indian America, her name is Lydia. And we did like two rounds of questions. We did like three rounds of questions. Ask everything from Kylie Jenner. It wasn't just us. There was uh, five of us on the panel. Wait, one, two. There's four of us on the panel. We asked everything from Kylie Jenner to um, politics, everything political that you could, Supreme Court justices, everything that you can possibly imagine. And um, we had a really fun time. And the guy that, there's like this couple and then this guy that we have worked with for, this is like really melted that we've worked with for a long time on, um... Oh look, they're walking out right now. There she is. Um, that we've worked with for a long time. I told her, I said, I want to, I want to judge. Like, I'm ready to judge a pageant. And she said, okay. She said, do you want to judge Miss Indiana America? And I said, I want to judge Miss Indiana America. And she said, have you ever judged a local pageant? And I said, no, I've only judged like a glitz, you know, pay for pageant. She goes, okay. Because you can't judge a local pageant and then judge a state pageant. So next year, I might be judging Miss Indiana America. And then they were giving me a hard time because, so if you don't know, Miss Indiana America, Miss America is really like, a, it's truly a scholarship program. Like, um, this year they took the bathing suit out, so there's no bathing suit competition in Miss America anymore. And it's, instead of the question, it's an interview. They have like a longer interview process. Um, and they're also doing like, um, they have to have like a statement. Like, and they're gonna like, like a hashtag, you know, like that you would like put out there like into the world based on something to do with Reese Witherspoon or something, I don't know. So anyway, they're really like, not that it wasn't already legitimate, but they're really legitimizing the Miss America pageant. So, um, yeah, I'm super, I was super excited about that. Um, doing it, it was fun. But I told her, I said, listen, next year, I've done these mock interviews now. I think we've done them six or seven years. I said, next year, she goes, next year you can judge. You can be a judge in the Miss America pageant if you want. I said, okay, I'm ready. So, yeah. And now Alex and I are going to go get something to eat. I have to run home first to upload my um, video from today because it's still not up. What is going on with my hair? It's still not up and I need to upload it. It's 10 till 8. My video is going to be up so late tonight. Um, does it really matter that my hair looks bad or that my video is on it? They're bike riding on the moon. You guys want to see, this is that trail that I was talking about. See that like goes through downtown Indianapolis and that's like, so you can see people are like biking on it and stuff like that. It goes all the way from downtown Indianapolis to the north side of Indianapolis. But yeah, we had a good time. It was really fun. I'm like really getting into listening to Harry Potter, the audiobook. Um, like, I, I liked it the first time I read it, but I, I struggled with it a little bit. Like, I'm really enjoying listening to it. And I'm only, like, an hour into it. The narrator is fantastic. And, um, I don't know, like... I think that, like, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you listen to so many audiobooks. But, like, for me, like, I retain information better when I hear stuff. Like, if I hear a song, I memorize the words, like, really quickly. And I love to read, but, like, when I hear an audiobook, like, I, I kind of, like... Like, I retain it a lot more. And so I feel like that while I'm, like, listening to this book. I don't know. I, I was I bought all of the books, so I want to read them. But I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll listen to all of the books. I've heard the whole, like, the whole series is great. And they are re-releasing the books um, onto, or the movies. They're re-releasing them into the movie theaters, Alex told me. So maybe afterwards we'll go and we'll see all of them. Who knows? All right, you guys, I'm gonna listen to my audiobook a little bit on the way home, and I will see you guys uh, later. Bye. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> I haven't charged my battery very much today. Well, I haven't charged it at all today. I charged it last night, and I made videos, so I have a feeling it's not gonna last real long. 
So it's early. It is like 10.30, 10.45. 10.45 exactly. So um, if it starts dying, I will just take it home and charge it and then do the rest of my vlog. But I um, just dropped Alex off. We went to Cheesecake Factory with Melissa and Jason. And we had to wait like 40 minutes for a table. Apparently it rained at the state fair today and so everybody like left there and came to the Cheesecake Factory is what they were telling us why it was so uh, it was such a long way. But we had a good dinner anyway and we talked about um, going to Ultra. We were like planning that and then we I talked to Jason about so like I haven't said a whole lot about this just because I mean, I've mentioned it on here a couple times, but I haven't said a whole lot about it because I don't know how it's going to work out. But Melissa's husband, Jason, who's been on the vlog quite a bit, um, he used to be in a band called Push Down and Turn, which was like, a, it was locally based in Indiana. It was like when I was like 20, it was when he played. They were huge in Indianapolis and they went on like a national tour and stuff. Um, and he still does like a, a lot of musical stuff. He's like in a band still. But he has a full studio in his basement. So I've talked to him about like coming up with like four songs that I want to like release on my Dad AF album. So we were talking about it and he was like, well, what do you, what do you, you've mentioned this before, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to have like, I want to do a country song. <laughs> I want to do like a, a pop song. These are not going to be super serious, okay? I'm just, just to explain. I said I want to do, um, this car's having their music blasting so loud that I can't have the windows open. But I said I want to have like, uh, you know, a country song. I want to have like uh, a pop song. I want to do like a jazz song, like very Frank Sinatra. And then I want to do like a dance song that just has like all of my catchphrases in it, which like he can do that without me and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I was wondering like while I could hear the music it's because I have the uh, sunroof open. Um, he's like, yeah, that's, we could do that like literally in one setting. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, all you need to do is write the lyrics. So um, my country song is going to be, if you've watched my videos for a long time, my country song is going to be the hillbilly homophobe song that I used to do in my videos back in the day, right here, be the homophobe, redneck gay, he's redneck gay all day. Available on iTunes. Um, so that's gonna be my country song. And then, um, I don't know what my other songs are gonna be. I was gonna do a song about PP called, um, Good morning, Mr. PP, and how are you today? The mice are in the kitchen and they wanna see you play. <laughs> but that's corny. So I don't know. We'll have to just, I have to think it through. We'll see. But I want to put out like four songs <laughs> on my album, Dad AF. And uh, that will be, well, I don't know. I said, how, will it really just take a day? He's like, yeah, we can do it over a weekend. We do it over two days. Alex could come over here. He and Melissa could like watch movies. And Melissa's like, I want to be the background vocalist. And I was like, okay. And Alex is like, I want to be the background vocalist. And I was like, okay. So they would be the background vocalists. And, uh, yeah, so we'll have to see what happens with that. I'm like really tired today. Like, I feel like I've been going and going and going and going all day long. I feel like it just caught up with me, um, like while we were at dinner. So I'm gonna get, I'm trying to get my vlog done early so I can spend some time with Alex before we go to bed tonight. And um, yeah, that's about it. I don't know what else. It was a good day. I wanted to go to the pool tonight and go swimming, go for a little night swim. It's so hot, 75. Well, it's not as hot as it was last night. And then I called Tanya and I said, do you want to get a fountain pop? And she's like, yeah, but I have to go like um, to Walmart or Meyer, and I don't feel like going to Walmart or Meyer tonight. And then she's like, and then I have to go pick up the dogs because she's got Karma, her new dog, and then Cash, her Mastiff. And then her son's dog, June, is like staying at her house right now while they're camp counselors. It, uh, Cash used to, or June used to be her dog. 
but now it's uh, next. So she's like, so I have to, how do, why is my mirror not working? How do you do this? Oh, there. <gasps> I fixed it. I'm so technological. So she said I have to pick up the dogs. I said, so we have to go to Walmart. And then she's like, just do your vlog in the car while I'm inside Walmart shopping. And um, I said, what all do you have to buy at Walmart? Like, how long are you going to be there? She's like, you know, she's like, I think maybe you should just not do. <laughs> we'll not go get a fountain pop tonight. I was like, but I want to see you. And she's like, well, you sound like you're busy. I said, I'm not busy. I said, I'm just tired. I just don't want to sit in a parking lot for an hour. And she was like, okay. So. Tomorrow I'll probably see her. Oh, man. Jason always orders off the Skinny Licious menu. That guy's like literally just sitting at a stoplight looking at his phone. Um, He's still sitting there. Still sitting there. <laughs> um, Jason always orders off the Skinny Licious menu, and he always gets stuff that looks so good, even though it's like on the Skinny Licious menu. I think I'm gonna start ordering from the Skinny Licious menu. Do you guys order off there? Do you get a Cheesecake Factory? We, it's, I don't know why we go there so much. It's like so easy. kindergarten today and he took the school bus and everything and Alex was showing me all the videos I feel like it was just yesterday that he uh, was born it's like so crazy that he's like and how old is he he'll be did he just turn six or will he be six in December I think he's five is five too young to be in kindergarten no I think he's five he looks so little with his little backpack and stuff. Oh my gosh. I remember this woman that I was friends with like years ago. I totally just forgot exactly what I was going to say. I feel like, do you ever just like feel like brainless? Like you like are like, ah, la, 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 la. I've been listening to the Harry Potter audiobook, like I said, like all day today. And actually when we were on our way home tonight, I was like, I asked Alex, I said, do you care if I listen to my audiobook? He's like, no, not at all. So I was listening to it. And he like kind of put his phone down. He's like, this is relaxing. I go, yeah, it's, that's why I listen to audiobooks. Like, it's really relaxing. He goes, yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> it is, though. I don't think we have anything planned for this weekend, which is fine by me. Do we have anything? I don't think we have one thing to do this weekend. Nothing. Just fantastic. I feel like we've had so much stuff to do. From going out of town, to like family stuff, to all kinds of stuff the last couple weeks. Do you ever 
ever feel like it's somebody's birthday and you can't remember whose birthday it is? I feel like it's somebody's birthday, but I can't remember whose birthday it is. When I was getting my hair cut today, I uh, was talking to my hairstylist and her daughter turns 10 tomorrow. And she was telling me like what she got her. And she was like, I got her a bike because she wants a bike. And she was like, I told her I'd get her a cell phone when she turned 10. So I got her a cell phone for her birthday. And she's like, and she's a single mom. And she was like, it's all so expensive. And um, I was like, why does she need to have a bike at 10 years old or a cell phone at 10 years old? I like, I really, to be honest with you, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but like, I don't understand the whole like need to have a cell phone when you're, when you're young. And, um, typically, like, parents will tell me, like, when they get their kids a cell phone early, it's like, um, they're like, well, it's, so that way if I have to get a hold of them or I know where they're at, then, like, I know I can get a hold of them, right? But I don't remember my parents ever having a, I don't know, I think that says a lot about, to some degree, like, we didn't have cell phones when we were growing up, you know what I mean? And we did okay. We had that phone that like with that cord that reached around like, you know, through the kitchen to the living room the, then your mom would pick up the phone upstairs and be like, are you still on the phone? You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know that I really believe that 10 year olds need to have cell phones, but I think that's a parent's prerogative. But what I really think it is, is that kids these days just really want phones and parents don't want to tell them no anymore is what I really think it is. But what do I know? I don't have any kids. But anyway, so she was telling me that her daughter was like, since you got me so many, like, nice things for my birthday, and I said, well, how does she know what she's getting for her birthday? And she goes, oh, I tell her everything she's getting. I was just like, why do you tell her everything that she's getting for her birthday? Like, I don't understand that. And um, she said, well, anyway, she said, since you're getting me so many nice things for my birthday, for Christmas, why don't you just get me one thing, and then you spend the rest of your money on you. <laughs> She's like a real adult 10 year old. She goes, what do you think about that? I said, I think that sounds like major manipulation to me. Because by the time Christmas rolls around, no 10 year old is going to remember what you got her for uh, her birthday. She's like, that's what I said. I said, what'd you tell her? She goes, I told her, why don't we enjoy your birthday tomorrow and we'll think about Christmas a few months down the road. <laughs> I was like, exactly. She's like, who, who knows what my situation will be? I might not even have a job Christmas time. Kids are so funny, aren't they, the way that they think? My nephew the other day, like, last Christmas, I don't know, like, it started as a joke, but, like, I said one day to him, he was acting up, this is Carlitos, and I said, I picked up my phone and I said, uh, I'm calling Santa Claus, and I'm gonna tell him that you haven't been, and he just looked at me, he was like this. No. No, T.O. Peter. And I said, well, I'm calling Santa Claus because you're misbehaving. Oh, he was hitting Sebastian. And I said, I'm calling Santa Claus because you're misbehaving. And he goes, no, T.O. Peter, don't call Santa Claus. So now, like, he's always very, like, careful with me. And um, whenever he acts up, like, Alex always says to him, you know, T.O. Peter is really good friends with Santa Claus. And Carlitos goes like this, like, real quick. He thinks, like, I'm gonna, like, I have a direct line to Santa Claus and I'm gonna call him. Which I think I cite, like, one of my friends, like, I saw them do that. I think it's why I said it or something, but. Isn't it crazy to think that Christmas is, like, right around the corner? I was looking at my, I mean, I just, I talked about this not, like, a, literally, like, a week ago. But it's weird because, like, I was looking at my blog number as I was putting it up today, which is, like, 222 or something like that. And I was, like, or 220. I was, like, I cannot believe we're, like, it's so weird to me that we're, like, more than halfway through the year, you know? And the one thing about doing my vlog is that it, like, really slows things down for me. Um, like, it kind of puts, like, my time in perspective because I vlog every day, right? So for me to just say like, oh, weeks went by, it's like, that's, it doesn't feel that way. Because every day, 
like I'm somebody that really utilizes my time, you know, and I do an hour long vlog or a half an hour vlog or whatever, and then I make all these other videos. So like every day, I'm like, I feel like I've really done a lot that day. But 2018 has really seemed to fly by a lot. I was talking to our waitress tonight and she was like, tell like when I'm out like I don't sit there and say to people like oh I make YouTube videos and blah blah blah, blah and all this kind of stuff and but Jason was said something about me making YouTube videos and she's like oh yeah I watch YouTube and she was like <laughs> and I said who do you like to watch and she goes well I watch a lot of family vloggers and she goes oh and Jeffree Star I love Jeffree Star and I said you do what do you like about him and she's like telling us all the stuff that she liked about him and uh, she lost like 70 pounds. She was telling, she was really friendly. She was telling this whole story. And um, she's like, yeah. She's like, I thought about starting a YouTube channel. She's like, my daughter's three and she d watches all of these toy reviews. Like, you know, kids opening toys. And then she watches all these prank channels. And I was like, do you realize like those are the channels that are literally making like $10 million a year. Like there's this whole misconception misconception on YouTube that like the PewDiePies and stuff, which they are making lots of money and they're getting sponsored videos and stuff. But these kids that are doing toy reviews and stuff, like they are making so much money, like legit, like they're making so much money. And I'm like, hmm, if I did my review channel, maybe once a week I could do a toy review with Carlitos on there. I wonder what he would think about that. Now, I know Sebastian would do it, but he's too little. He's two. So. <laughs> he's now just saying, oh, it's so funny. Okay, so Sebastian now, if you ask him a question, he says, yep. Y-E-P to everything. He goes, yep. Yep. <laughs> and he knows mommy and poppy. And other than that, he knows, yep. So you, said, you ask him everything. You're like, are you tired? Yep. <laughs> are you awake? Yep. <laughs> and Alex like tickled his like foot the other day and he's like super, super ticklish. And so now Carlito supposedly is ticking, tickling his foot because he saw Alex do it. So. You know, it's interesting. I never thought I would have, like one of the things about growing up as an only child that I knew is that I would never have any nieces and nephews. Like, I just never thought that would be a reality for me. And being gay, you know, I grew up in a generation where I didn't think we were going to get married. I didn't think we were going to have marriage. I mean, the whole idea of same-sex marriage and marriage equality never really even, for me, was like really like a realistic thought until like, 12 years ago or so, let's say, right? Well, I thought, okay, we might we might see marriage, a gay marriage sometime in our country. But not really realistically did I ever really think that it would ever happen to where I would like, you know, legit have nieces and nephews and brothers-in-laws and sisters-in-law, you know? And, and I think that's like something that people like don't think about sometimes, you know, is that that's sure, like, not a huge thing when it comes to, like, marriage equality, but, like, having, like, legal, a um, legal mother-in-law, a legal brother-in-law and sister-in-law and nephews that are, like, legally my family, you know, like, I never thought that would be the case for me, so those are some of the things that, like, being married and having, being able to be married, you know, it's, I think, something that a lot of people take for granted. You know, you don't think about that. So, I feel like, to me, like, because I never thought that I was going to have that, like, that's something that I'm extremely grateful for, you know? <sighs> Are your eyes ever just tired? My eyes were so tired. Do you guys want to see something so funny? I've shown this on here before, but I don't know why this cracks me up so much. I'm going to show you, okay? So, right over here, I'm going to show you. You ready? So, I'm in Zinesville, which is this little suburb. It's real cute. But right here 
is a Payless liquor. Do you see? It says right there. Here, look, I'm gonna show you. There is the Payless liquor with your lotto numbers right here. Are you ready? What's so funny about this? In the same building is Bentley of Zionsville. <laughs> look at that. And then right next to Bentley of Zionsville, you can get your Mr. Misty right here at the Dairy Queen or your Blizzard. Hey, you can right there, you can see your ice cream cakes in the window. That's so funny. I'm gonna go get me a Bentley and my lotto numbers. <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up so much, but it does. This little town is so adorable. Can you hear all the crickets? Look at this, there's like a little gazebo park right here with like ferns. Do you see those ferns hanging? Look how pretty that is. This town is so adorable. I'm, I have like shown this on here before, but I'm gonna show it again in case people haven't seen it. So this is like the street, the, like the main street. Like these houses are like so expensive. Look at this, little cute houses on porches and stuff. Do you see these little houses? These houses are probably a million dollars. They're right off the strip. Like, look, look at this. Aren't these absolutely adorable houses? One of our friends in here, she was telling us that she inherited this house kind of reminds me of the movie Halloween. But um, one of our friends, she inherited a house in here by her grandfather. And she moved in and then the people in the lot next door moved. So they bought the lot next door. And um, I'd love to see where their house is because I don't know where her house is. But anyway, they bought the lot next door. And they, oh, that was a different street than I usually go down because this is the street that I usually go down. They bought the lot next door and then, I mean, look at this right here. Isn't that so cute? They have like a full couch on the front porch and everything, do you see? And ceiling fans on their front porch and everything. So they, um, they owned the corner, a corner lot somewhere here. Their neighbors moved and so they bought the, the lot next door to it and then they like redid their whole house. So like now their house is two lots, which I have no idea what that, this is first and I think I want to be on main, which I have no idea what I have. Oh, it's going to stop. I'll be right back. But I have no idea what a house around here costs. I mean, like, I know that these, like, right off the main strip. Zionsville is at a very expensive part of town. They're probably, like, a million dollars. If not more than that. It's called, like, the Village of Zionsville. Fall Festival weekend after Labor Day in Lions Park. And it's actually like, here, I'm gonna show you this. I mean, it looks like, if you haven't seen me talk about this before, it looks like legit. Like, do you see it's brick roads? Like, look, brick roads. And it looks like a movie set. Do you see this? Like, the street looks like a movie set. Like, look at this restaurant right here. And here's a bookstore. like a rare bookstore right here. Black Dog Books. I mean, how cute is this town? And then over here they have like all these shops. Look at this little... I could 
so live here. Please don't. Have money. <laughs> I wish I did that. Okay. Do you ever drive through little small towns? Here's a little ice cream place called the Skiv. Do you ever drive through little small towns and think to yourself like you'd like to live there? You know, like, oh, I could do this. Like, Alex would do this because this is close to, um, like, this is close to where, like, this isn't too far from where we live right now. This is, like, 10 minutes from where we live. My mom always wanted to live in a little small town. But in some ways she was like so metropolitan that she acted like that's what she wants. But I don't really think that that's really what she wanted. And in some ways I feel very similar to that. It's like, as much as I would like to live in like a small town, I don't know that I would really want to live in a small town if that makes sense. I think like, you know, like when we went to go to Essex, Connecticut, like it was adorable and I loved being there and stuff like that. But I think like if I was really there like all the time, like I don't think that I would want to be there all the time. You know what I mean? Now, I mean, like, that was real close, like, 15 minutes to bigger cities like Hartford and stuff like that, so. Let's see if this road is closed as of the 6. It doesn't look closed, and it's the 8th. Alex and I are thinking about maybe for, like, when we go to Miami for Ultra this next year, like, Melissa and Jason are just going to go for three or four nights. So we're thinking about, because that's always a longer trip for us. Alex is like, how do you feel about instead of like being in Miami for like seven nights, how would you feel about like being there from like Friday to Monday and then Monday going to like Mexico? And I'm like, that's an expensive trip, Alex. And he's like, no, like maybe if we like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, Okay, that's an expensive trip, and of course Jason has to fuel it. And he's like, it's probably not any more expensive than staying in Miami for over a week. And I'm like, Ugh. I go, well, you know what we could do is I could, I said we could do the Bahamas. The Bahamas, which are right, you know, south of there, might not be too expensive. And uh, Melissa's like, well, Atlantis is really expensive. I'm like, okay, I'm trying, like, Miami for four nights, three or four nights, and then Mexico for five or six nights, that's an expensive trip, you know? Like, I don't think Alex has any clue how expensive that is until it's like, okay, how are we gonna pay for this? He's a big dreamer, which is fine. I think it's great to dream, you know? But I think like, you know, we're starting to talk about some trips for next year. He really wants to go to Thailand next year. And I'm like, okay, well, we got to start saving money if we're going to go to Thailand next year. He's like, okay. We'll make it happen. You know, he's like, okay, we'll make it happen. We'll figure it out. I don't have, like, this rush to go to see Thailand. I don't know. I just, like, that's not... I mean, Fiji, if I could afford it, and just lay on a bed, or buy, lay lay on the beach all week long, lay in a bed too, but lay on the beach all week long, yeah, I can do that. But like, I'm not like a big tourist person. Like Alex wants to go and he wants to go see the temples and stuff like that in Thailand, which I'm sure is very beautiful and very, you know, cool. But like, I don't know, I just like, I mean, like this is just my truth, but like, I think, I like the idea of being like that until I'm really there. And so like the reality is I don't really get down with all that shit. You know, one thing I really want to do is I really want to go to Washington DC. I've never been, I've never even been to Washington DC in my life. And, um, that's a trip I really want to do. I feel like I just like feel like that's an important trip for me to go and see some of the things, you know, like the Washington Monument. I just like to walk around and see some things. I really would love to go to the Holocaust, Holocaust Museum. My cousin went. She just said she was like overwhelmingly emotionally moved by it. Um, yeah. Can you believe I've never been to Washington, D.C.? I've never been to Philadelphia. I've never been to Baltimore. To a lot of the places that people in the United States have been to. Play 
plane and a trip to Houston. Probably the end of September. Sometime, we'll have to see. And where else? <sighs> Alex is going to North Coast in Chicago. And then he's going to Nashville to drive home with it. I just talked about that the other day. We don't need to talk about that again. Um, and then we don't have really any trips after Vegas planned for the rest of the year. Um, like I said, Houston, but I would do that by myself. I'm thinking about maybe going out there and visiting Rich. Um, so, I don't know. We're going to probably need to plan something. I said I was not going to spend New Year's in Indianapolis again this year, but I haven't really heard any talk about what we're doing for Christmas or New Year's, so it looks like I'll probably be here for New Year's again. The thing is, I don't always love, like... Um, I don't always love... Um, People are always like on their phones at stoplights and they never see the light change. Um, I don't like to board Boo and Tucker just cause Boo gets very confused sometimes if we're gone for a long time. But if he stays at the house, he's fine. So <clears throat> for um, Las Vegas, uh, Carlos's friend is gonna house sit for us with Boo and Tucker, and then PB is gonna go to Tanya's, unless something changes with that. Um, but that's the plan as of right now. But like the weekend after is when Alex is going to North Coast, and I was gonna go to Chicago to see Miss Continental, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to bore the dogs that long. Because then we would come around, we would come home be home for like two days, turn around, and board the dogs again. I'm not gonna do that to the dogs. I love them too much. Well, or PP be boarded and Boo and Tucker be at home by themselves after we've been gone for a week. I don't wanna do that, you know? I'm sure if you guys have animals, you totally understand what I mean by that. And Alex is like, well, I mean, you know, if we could take the dogs, I'm like, what? Take the dogs three, take three dogs when we travel places? He's like, well, a lot of hotels you can take dogs. I'm like, no, that is like, no, that is a lot of work, you know, to drive to Chicago and put the dogs in a hotel for, I don't know. I don't think that's fun for them. You know, when we talk about moving to Miami, like what we would probably do is if we had not when we move down there, when we have a place down there. Like, let's say if we're going to go down there for like a month. Well, one of us would just drive our car down there with the dogs because then we would have a car. Okay, I had to stop it because this guy drove by and his music was too loud. Um. So, yeah. This has been like a very informative vlog tonight and it hasn't been very, very interesting whatsoever, has it? Sorry. the longer vlogs or do you like the shorter vlogs it seems to me that people like really like the longer vlogs but I don't know how much of them you guys are really watching you know it's interesting like when I first started watching vlogs do you guys know other vloggers that vlog like long like I do I don't feel like I know a whole lot but when I first started watching vlogs back in the day, like, I would watch people vlog and it would be like... Seven to ten minutes. Well, I think the whole kind of definition of what a vlog is has changed too, you know? It's like, I always, like, watch, like, the vlog brothers back in the day. Do you remember what you would call it? Vlog brothers? Or vlog? Or vlog? Vlogging? <laughs> I don't know why I called it that. But their name was, you know, uh, John and Hank Green, and they were the vlog brothers. And, like, they're not, like, really vloggers, like what we think of as vloggers today where we show their life. They literally just sat there and talked. But that is a video vlog, you know? And so mine's kind of like a mixture of both. Like, mine's kind of like I show you my life, but then it's like a mixture of, like, a video um, vlog, if that makes sense. And, um... 
but I remember watching them back in the day. But like a lot of the guys that I would watch, like, um, like, uh, oh, RJ and Will at Shep Six Eight Nine, and who else? Like, uh, oh, Mark Miller and Ethan Hathcote that are friends with. We know a lot of people that they're friends with because they're both from Indiana. And so, like, a lot of our friends were friends with theirs at like IU and Ball, at Ball State. They're closer to Alex's age. A lot of our friends are like a little bit younger than Alex. Know them. And they would just like have these like, you know, both of them would have like these seven minute like videos that would like be entire day vlogs. And I think about that now and I'm like, how did you edit down your entire day to seven minutes? Like that's crazy to me, you know? Maybe they were longer than that, I just don't remember. And like even family vloggers and couple vloggers and stuff, like as I watch a lot of them now, like, a lot of them are only, like, 10 to 12 minutes long, the videos. And it's, like, literally clips throughout the whole day. And I'm, like... I know that I would probably have more people that watched my channel if my vlogs were not so long. I'm not stupid. I know that. That battery is, like, flashing like crazy. Like, it's going to die. Um, so, if it dies, I just want to say goodnight to you now. And I love you. I'm just going to keep on vlogging until it dies. Um, but, and I will see you tomorrow. But I know that if I if my vlogs were shorter, I know that like I would have a higher subscriber count and more people would watch them, but I don't do it for that. So it's like, I think the people that really wanna watch my vlogs and listen to them are gonna listen to them. And if you only wanna listen to 10 minutes of it, listen to 10 minutes of it, you know, it doesn't really matter. I was thinking when we were doing this interview with Miss Indiana America tonight, you know, like one of the questions I asked her was like, what's your biggest insecurity and why? And, um, you know, I was thinking about that with myself, like my insecurities and things that have kept me from having like confidence in my life. And you know, when I think about my, my biggest insecurities, like over the years, there are things that like just don't even matter a whole lot to me anymore. You know, like they do, but there are things that like I don't allow that. Okay. Scratch that. They're not things that don't matter to me. They're things that I, um, don't allow to bother me the same way that I did then. Like, number one, my voice. And people are so nice to me about my voice today. And those that aren't can fuck off. Um, because I don't have any issues with my voice today, you know? And, uh, and I think the thing is, is that when you make YouTube videos, and I, we were on the radio before I made YouTube videos, so I got to hear what my voice really sounds like. When you record your voice and then you play it back, I know what my, it's like, you know like when you hear your voice on like voicemail back in the day, and it's like, oh my God, do I really sound like that? Like, I know how I sound. So when I'm talking right now, I know how I'm sounding to the world, if that makes sense. I can hear it in my own ears. And I like my voice today, you know, I, I, I it's who I am. My weight has also been a major issue of my insecurity, you know, through the years. But I also know that that, my weight lies within me of whether or not I change it. I'm like ultimately the only person that can do anything about it, my weight. I know that, right? So it's like, I think that's it. I, I don't, and that's not a lot of insecurities, you know? Like I don't feel stupid. I don't feel, I just don't have a lot of insecurities, you know, like today. And I really think that like YouTube has allowed me to really work through some of those things, you know, like maybe lack of confidence, but like that's not really an insecurity, you know, like I'm insecure about my body image. I'm insecure about my weight. I'm insecure about my voice. Um, when my hair started turning white because I chose for it too, I was insecure about that, but I didn't want to have to keep up anymore. It was just so tiring to try to keep up with what is like young look like with having brown hair. I was just like, you know what, who gives a it stops. I'll say, see you guys later. I love you. Bye.